Welcome back everybody to our class introduction to quantum optics. Today we want to derive the basic equations, quantum mechanical equations, that govern the response of an atom to a classical light field. So let's get started. So starting point for our discussion for, to describe the time evolution of the quantum mechanical atom uh, to when it's exposed to a classical light field is of course the Schrödinger equation. So here we have the state vector of our atom, of our atomic state. And its time derivative is linked to the Hamiltonian of the atom H0 and the light atom interaction Hamiltonian which is explicitly time dependent because we have an oscillating electric field uh, of light impinging onto the atom. So we have this time dependent interaction Hamiltonian and that's acting again on state psi. So this is the Schrödinger equation and this is of course what we need to dis uh, solve in order to describe the time evolution of the quantum mechanical system. Now in order to solve that we're going to make an expansion of our wave function psi of t in terms of the basis functions of our atomic system. Remember the atomic eigenstates can be written in the following form. They're eigenstates of the atomic Hamiltonian. So this here is the atomic Hamiltonian. So it describes everything the atom is made of and these states n are the atomic eigenstates of our atomic Hamiltonian H0 with eigenenergies En. So H0 times N equals to En times N. Now this forms a complete basis set, these atomic eigenstates, so I can expand any wave function that I have, any psi of t of my atom, I can expand as a superposition state of these atomic basis functions with suitable coefficients Cn of t and I've explicitly written down the eigenenergy phase evolution of these nth eigenstates. Now, now we have to take this ansatz and we plug it here into the Schrödinger equation and derive a differential equation for those coefficients cn here that will tell us how this atomic state evolves as a function of time. So let's do that. Let's uh, plug this in on the left hand side and on the left hand side we of course get two time derivatives, one for the term cn of t here and a derivative for the exponential term here. This is written down here. This is the first time derivative and the second time derivative of the exponential function. And now I do that for the right hand side and now I plug this in on the right hand side my ansatz wave function psi of t and uh, then I will find the following terms h0 acting on psi gives me this first term here. So this is basically h0 acting on psi and this here is basically h i acting on psi. Now if we take a look at this equation we actually see that this term here together with the i h bar in front here is actually the same as this term here. So they actually exactly cancel. So this term here and this term here they cancel. They're exactly the same. They appear on both sides of our equation. Now Throwing that away, it dramatically simplifies our differential equation for the coefficient cn. And now what I can do to continue on this problem, I can actually multiply this uh, equality here from the left with a bra vector of the kth eigenstate of my atom. Now what is that going to do? Remember this forms an orthogonal basis sets my atomic eigenfunctions. So the scalar product of k times n, that's just delta kn. Right? So when I do that here, when I do that on the left hand side of my equation, I get delta kn, so I'm only going to keep here the coefficient, the kth coefficient of my equation. Here on the right hand side I can't just pull this kth vector through to form directly the scalar product because I have this operator hi in between, so I just have to keep that the sum on the right hand side. So this is how things look now. I project out the kth coefficient by multiplying with the bra vector k from the left to these equations. And now I get a differential equation how the time derivative of the kth amplitude ck is linked to all the other kind of amplitudes cn of my atomic system. And here I have some kind of term which links this. These are the so-called matrix elements which tells me how strong the nth state is linked to the kth state in my system. So now I can just kind of simplify this a little bit further and uh, basically right now just bring this exponential over to the other side. 
bring this over here so we end up with the following equation so this just gives me i h bar c k dot that's just the sum over all basis states n c n of t e to the minus i e n k t divided by h bar k h i of t n so this is my differential equation that I have to solve to get the time evolution of these coefficients. And now this term E n k that I've introduced here, this E n k, that's just the difference energy between the nth eigenstate and the kth eigenstate. And I can simplify this further. Omega n k, when I divide this by h bar here, that's just E n minus E k divided by h bar. So that's the angular frequency difference between the nth eigenstate in, this, in my system and the kth eigenstate in my system. Okay, so you see that the amplitude change here, the rate of change of my kth amplitude is linked to all the other amplitudes of my atomic system. And the strength of how much, how important this nth amplitude is when it couples to the kth amplitude is given by this term here. And this is what we call the matrix element which tells us something how strongly these are coupled. So this is the matrix element of my atom describing the coupling of the nth state to the kth state in my system. Okay, so this will tell us something about how strongly these are coupled and that's in general an atomic property of my system that I can calculate for any kind of state n and state k you give me and if you tell me the dipole operator which is this interaction Hamiltonian here I can calculate this matrix element telling me how strong these are coupled. All right and in the next lectures we have to deal how to solve these differential equations of motion and how we can get some deeper understanding what the atom is actually doing. When we turn on the light field the atom starts out in some state to what other states does it couple, how do the amplitudes, these cn coefficients change as a function of time when we turn on the light field. So this is something we want to discuss in the next lecture. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.